宗教は決定的に時代遅れになり宗教や神秘による不死の問題の解決がもはや日々を満たすことはないそして死の砦は生物学的に揺さぶられ人類はついに個人の不死を実現させる一歩手前まで来たのだ Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. The video in the beginning and what will be shown throughout it is made by Anton Widerkle. The short film is called Citizens of the Cosmos. There's a few different ways of understanding cosmicism. One can look at the creator of it, which is a man named Nikolai Fedorov, or one can look at the modern concept that's created from it. And the thing is, with Fedorov, Um, it has no, no one is following his concept to a T anymore. The idea of Fedorov was the concept of the eternal, the concept of living forever, concept of resurrection, but also a lot of the religious aspects. Modern day cosmicism doesn't have much of the religious aspects left. Now it's about individualism. I quote The most important thing for us. Is the immortality of the individual and its life in the cosmos. We have elevated this value to a goal in itself, thus formulating our theological point of view. Our philosophy is first and foremost a great theology, and all philosophical problems are shaped by our glorious objectives. And usually, one can define it as more bio cosmicism. To focus on the individual, the, the human aspect of it. To quote some of their points, death reduces man and debases the human character. But man has within him an instinct for immortality at a time when religion has become obsolete. In biocosmicism, every individual, and indeed mankind as a whole, will find complete. Freedom only in the struggle for the individual immortality. Note that in biocosmicism, the question of personal immortality is also regarded as a question of resurrection. That will give you a bit of an insight of what's happening today, where the main cosmicists are looking into today. But the man we're going to look into is a bit different. <laughs> Now, when we have a bit of an understanding of what cosmicism actually is, let's actually understand another aspect of it. An aspect that has been forgotten and could be defined as right wing cosmicism. But that's kind of a weird way of putting it. But it is cosmicism with the focus of something very different. Created by Valerian Nikovelich Maraviov. Valerian comes from a rather old Russian noble family called the Moraviovs. Created in 1488. Yes, yes, yes. Ha ha ha, laugh it away. So his family was very influential, and especially in the Duma, where his father was the Minister of Justice of the Russian Empire and a member of the State Council. And you can go back further and further and further back. Let's just say simply a very influential family, a lot of political influence. So that will paint a different life for Valerian. And one might think that, okay, so this different life has been painted, he's a nobleman, is he then hated by the Soviets? I should say that he's hated by Stalin, but he's actually loved by Trotsky, because his ideas were unique during the time. And that's nothing you can just remove, at least for Trotsky. You gotta keep these ideas at least somewhat in balance. So what was his main ideas? 
So this little influential person that Trotsky really liked, and he hired even him for diplomatic department, and he was even head of the division of the People's Commissariat of the Foreign Affairs. Valerian's focus, just as the other cosmoses, is more about the immortality of life. But how do you actually receive immortality? How does the human expand beyond the cosmos to reach immortality? It is through the Christian sacraments, that of the Eucharist. And it's even written in Fedorov's philosophy as a prototype of the future union of all spheres of man's action and creation around the principal purpose of resurrecting generations of people who lived before us, regulating the nature, transforming the earth and the cosmos into the kingdom of God. Thus, Christianity acquires a cosmogenic nature and is seen as a religion that leads man to the being to perfection. Valerian's thought was an Anglo-American pragmatism. The idea of Charles Peirce, William James, John Dewey was seen through Fedorov's concepts. But Fedorov was not striving to the philosophy of action, but rather the philosophy of contemplation, but also extending the very notion of action and viewing it in the framework of Christianity from the point of view of the divine construction and by representing the humankind as collaborator of God, reconstructing the world into the splendid, imperishable being it was before its fall. Thus, according to this task, is transforming that action of the humanity and extending it to the whole cosmos as a philosophy of action. Action is viewed and applied to all creatures of the universe and its result being the resurrection. It's combining action and fate. Pragmatism is only possible if it includes idealism. The new method of cultural creation shall be based on the combination of the word, the thought and the action, which is an inexhaustible source of creation and is, in this sense, of a deeply religious character. Valerian repeats Dostoevsky's words. The church, this is the ultimate idea for the state. It is the church that is the Russian revolution, as its outcome to which it makes progress through culture. Valerian was always ready for this new construction and wishing to expand it. Even trying to build the public sentiment that would create stronger men than that of the authorities. One can speak of a general post-revolutionary cosmic, active evolutionist current of thought, of new themes of the universal labor, of radical transformation of the world and the human nature, of combining death and achieving mastery over space. This according to Svetlana Semenova. The image of the church takes on a truly cosmic dimension goes beyond the boundaries of time and history and expands so that it is equal to the image of the universe in which death and division are overcome, to the image of the new heaven and the new earth, given in the last chapter of Revelation. All the worlds, all the hierarchies of living creatures are related to the cosmic church. It embodies not simply a perfect organization of the society, but a perfect syzygy, organization of being coming to replace the double impenetrability of creatures and things. It embodies not simply a perfect organization of the society. It embodies the complete in totality, the absolute life. The church is the universe in a state of being perfect. At the same time, it exists in a historical dimension as a dynamic all encompassing unity. Every person at that is related to all the other ones in the myriads of living creatures in the world, related not by some part of themselves, as it is sometimes the case with earthly unions, but wholly with all their being and action. It is this great work that Valerian's view is culture in all its scope. Culture is seen as a process of transforming the universe, bringing it closer to the state of the church, the world's enlightenment, 
the same image of the culture as a common task, as a liturgy beyond cathedrals that defeats evil, chaos and death. This culture of transfiguration, it opposes the previous cultures that were based on aggressive exploitation, on using and keeping the divisions. As it makes all the members of humanity participate in transformation of the world, unites them in the common rhythm of a powerful cosmic endeavor and resurrection by their joint force. All the living ones. What is more, it gives all the world's creatures an opportunity to become creatures, intelligence and conscious, and that all the nature is evolved into the great process of transforming the world, mastering time and creating a new heaven and a new earth. All right, that's a bit preachy. <laughs> I'm going to stop quite a lot more here, but I think that's enough. For now, there's a different types of um, development that's been working on, uh, more things of philosophy, um, ex creating a synthetic culture that will overcome on time and space, and establish cosmocracy. There's a lot of more concepts to it. Um, I will have text in the description that you can read yourself, but for now, let's keep it like that. I do want to point out again, because I talked about Trotsky before, uh, here's interesting. Trotsky in his speech of the fifth anniversary of the Sverlov Communist University declared against cosmicism in proletarian poetry when he was speaking about the essence of revolutionary character of life and about the role of the teacher of the new man, who carries the idea of a revolution. He also made a clear statement that any cosmic revolution striving to build bridges yet unknown and not heard of to outer worlds in space is out of the question. That a construction of the future is a concrete man of this time, and that there is not an abstract cosmic, but a quite special historical and political sense behind it. Valerian disagreed with Trotsky, um, claiming that he's just simplifying cosmicism and silly. He empathizes that true revolutionary characters of life involves not only a social, but an ontological shift, and that the day of the revolution is the day to master nature. <laughs> Aratana say me, Ataeru to you, Monday demo are.